Would there be NIL if there weren't Title IX? I don't think so. I think it would look a lot different for us female athletes. How does your generation view Title IX? Because I played before there was NIL, and I'm seeing the difference between how your generation is getting so much money, getting possibilities that weren't afforded to us. For me and kind of for my team, we talk about it a lot, actually. I think that we're very like grateful and thankful for those who kind of came before us. You know, we have great alumni, and they really, you know, make sure that we cherish kind of what we have now. Well, you've seen both sides. You yeah. started when NIL wasn't a thing, and now it is. How yeah. much has changed there? What, what is that process like? It's a good and a bad thing. You know, there's you know, it's kind of two sides to opportunities like this. I think it's a great thing just because it's given me the opportunity to kind of show my personality a little bit more and you know, kind of deepen my brand with the viewers and um, just kind of gives me an opportunity to show a side of me that I think I wouldn't be able to show before. But you know, it definitely does bring an aspect of pressure. Not a pressure to perform better, but just, you know, like, oh, if I strike out 10 times, am I gonna get another deal? Like, you know, just kind of more that. But I think that it, it's been an amazing opportunity for me. Tom Brady being your uncle, what has he taught you through this NIL situation and, and any advice he's given you there? He actually was one of the first people along with my grandfather to kind of make me feel like this was an opportunity for me because before, you know, being a woman athlete, especially softball, you're not gonna go make millions like these baseball players or these football players or basketball mm -hmm. players. Like, you just don't have those opportunities, unfortunately. So I thought like, oh, maybe I'll get a deal for like a hundred bucks. And that was kind of <laughs> what I was shooting for, you know, like, because I just didn't believe that Add those quite were... a few zeros to that yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just didn't think that there was gonna be opportunities for me, to be honest. So my Uncle Tommy was actually the one that introduced me to my agency and all the people in there because he works with them as well. So he was just a really positive influence on me and you know he really made me feel comfortable going through this journey. What goes into your thought process when you're deciding on these? I think you know at a young age they're probably telling you something that's authentically you. Yeah. Something. That, what exactly is that advice? That's something that I kind of had to struggle with a little bit was like when I first joined the agency it was like well what is your brand? And I'm like I'm 20 who years old, that? like I don't know what my brand is. <laughs> I don't like, even know who I am at 20. Right. I don't even know what my practice schedule is for next week. Right. Like, I don't know even who I am. That's kind of what college is about, is figuring out exactly. you know, what you like and curating like, what do I use? Or like, what am I passionate about? Title IX really opened doors for female participation in sport. You and I both started playing sports at a young age, probably because of that. Yeah. But now you're opening doors for so many and they want to follow your path. What does that mean to you? It means so much just because I would look up to these players and you know mm -hmm. they were so amazing and they were so cool and you know my mom went through the experience so I wanted to almost kind of make her proud and make her feel like I was going to do something bigger for myself. You just mentioned your mom. What impact did she have on you? She was a single mom raising you and your sister, being a traveling nurse as well and how has that really impacted the, the route that you've had? It's just really shown me like nothing is easy in life and you know even though I've been very blessed to have many opportunities. She's really shown me like what the grind means and like what it genuinely means to like do anything you can for your family. So I'm just really grateful that I've had that at such a young age that I'm I'm never gonna have to, you know, go through like, oh my God, this is hard. Like I already know what that looks like, mm -hmm. just, you know, watching my mom over the last 10 years. What do you want to see from the future of women's sports? You really have a view that none of us have. Yeah. You're currently in college. You get to see how the NIL was before and after. What makes it better? There has definitely been a lot of improvement. The gap between men and women has definitely closed a lot over the last 50 years. But I do think that there just needs to be more of like the hype around women's sports. There are some amazing women athletes and I think that it gets really downplayed based off the fact that we don't get the same promotion. That's kind of a shame, but there's been definitely leaps and bounds made. What's next for you, Maya Brady? I definitely want to build my brand, but I'm definitely not done, you know, playing at UCLA, which is kind of my main focus right now. Looking forward to meeting my new teammates and getting back to, you know, the grind all over again. Um, but definitely furthering my NIL experiences and, you know, getting deeper into that and, you know, just softball and school and being a regular student and just, yeah. Maya, thank you so much. I thank really appreciate you. it. Congratulations on everything.